My kids and I were playing at the playground, and to be completely honest, I was horrified by some of the welding that I saw. So today, we're gonna go over what I saw, how these problems most likely happened, and how we can make sure we avoid making these mistakes with our work. So while I was at the playground playing with my kids, we were climbing on the monkey bars, and yes, I was absolutely climbing them with my kids, I began to have a look around at some of the welding and construction on this stuff. Gotta say, after looking at it, I was a bit worried. Now, a lot of people who have learned to weld definitely know that walking around everyday objects and places, we see a lot of welding on stuff that's a little bit suspect. And even in some cases, straight up unsafe. Now, I know not every weld done on the face of this planet is gonna be perfect. But in some cases, we can look at examples like this and use it as an opportunity to learn. So take a look at this close-up photo I took here. This was one of about 10 rungs on the monkey bars. And here we can see a pipe which has been compacted on each end. It has been butted up against this other pipe to form a joint where it has been welded. And taking a look at it here, we see all types of stuff going on with it. Now, to be honest, whether this pipe is made of steel or aluminum, MIG, stick, whatever, either way, it presents a few problems that we're going to potentially have to deal with down the line. Take a look at some of the things we can see going on here. We can see here that there basically is two passes, one on each side of this joint. They have been kind of slightly connected on each end, but in these areas as well, we also see that there's a couple issues issues with how that's been done as well. After welding, these obviously have been ground down. Don't really know why, perhaps to deal with some spatter or perhaps to blend it in a little more thoroughly for a better profile. Regardless, when that happened, it's done a couple things here. What we see here is it has left small pits behind or looking at it, small voids where the filler material meets the base material. What has happened over time is absolutely one of the most common things that I see when welding construction, parts, components for whatever, but are put together near the ocean. Take a look at where this playground is. It is right next to the Pacific Ocean. So over time, being so close to the ocean, what do we have to worry about? Can you guess? Something that's super common for where I live, and it is corrosion. The salt in the ocean and obviously in the air near it. Tons of fog where I live. This will wreak havoc on all kinds of welding projects over time, whether steel, aluminum, or even stainless steel. This is absolutely something that we have to take into consideration if it is not done properly. What we see here, where we have seen a lack of fusion and perhaps even some burn through into the parent material underneath that we can't see we have spots that we have invited corrosion to take place whether corrosion does damage over time or from impact or stress from a load from someone playing on it this most likely will lead to failure over time. So let's take a look at an example of how I would do this job. So here I've got roughly the same size pipe. I've compressed the end to duplicate the joint that we see here. And you can see that I have detailed every part properly. And in doing so, I've ensured proper preparation of every piece in this joint. I was gonna say part, but that's too many P's. And when we put it together, we see an absolutely perfect fit up for the most part. Pretty simple thing, put it together properly. More peas again, did it again. The most important part is this stage here. As you begin to tack your joint together, if it isn't fitting up properly, we're going to be struggling when we weld it out. You can see my tacking has been placed strategically on the ends of the pipe. And each one is done with a proper blend and profile of the exact size and shape of the weld I'm gonna be putting over top of it. The most important part is properly leaving from the corner where I'm gonna be starting from. When I'm starting, I wanna ensure a perfectly blended size and get everything settle down exactly the way I want it before moving. This is something I work extensively with with each one of my students in my online program. This is absolutely the most important part of every weld. Once I begin moving and I start to turn the corner, I reset, I get comfortable again, and then I go for the whole shot right across the top of the pipe. What I'm doing is I'm really focusing on my edges on either side of the weld. I want the smoothest transition between these two surfaces. Now preparing to properly wrap up the corner, I'm making sure that each start stop I do is properly blended with the previous pass I'm tying in from. Every time I stop and restart, I'm ensuring proper comfort so that I can make sure I can see everything clearly. I need to make sure that I can see what I'm doing so I can keep a close watch on everything and make sure that my overall width and profile stays consistent. And the toes of the weld blend in properly on each side of the weld. Wrapping around the last side here, you can see I have no trouble matching up with the profile from where I started. And putting a nice button on the end to close it up with a proper profile, we complete the pass. Let's take a look. We can see that the shape and profile stayed pretty much consistent around the whole thing for the most part. 
My stepping distance allowed the filler material to have enough reinforcement without falling flat in between each step. The button is placed well and has not left any voids or gaps anywhere. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this one. Over time, you can imagine kids or fully grown adults swinging away on this playground equipment. Something that's done up properly with good reinforcement and good edges. This is gonna leave a much better chance for it to hold and leave less points of corrosion or areas where stress cracks can take effect over time. Let's take a look at the other one again. We're gonna look at the toes of the weld across the top. And while I TIG welded this one, we don't really know the process of the original one, but this is absolutely super common that we see voids here where corrosion is starting to take place. Again, this is just a source of corrosion on the metal itself. And after corrosion or a certain amount of time, this can lead to a failure coming from a stress fracture or a crack of some kind. Looking at the toes of the weld on my piece here, we can see that the filler material is blending properly with the base material and it stays consistent with the line to make sure there is no gaps, voids, or any problems like that. Now the most important part we need to take a look at on the original photo is the corners. This is going to be a source of corrosion over time as we can see. Even the paint has not filled up this gap properly. We can take a look at how I prefer to wrap a corner. We can see everything is connected properly and maintains a proper and consistent profile. The most important thing we need to see is proper stop starts. And when we do it the way we need to, we don't see any chances of this happening. We don't see any hollow points or gaps at all. It does not take long to wrap something up properly like this. In my online program, we work on our stop starts and our connections a lot. Teaching people in person, this is also one of the most important things we work on. It saves our welding from developing problems down the line, as well as maintaining a proper profile so it looks awesome too. Now I know a lot of these welding jobs are done simply for high production. Not everybody's going to spend the same amount of time on something that I am. But to be honest, this takes such a little amount of time to connect properly. Wrapping corners, paying attention to details to make sure we don't have these problems. Whether this is steel, aluminum, stainless steel, these details are super important to work on. This was an episode I did not that long ago specifically on this subject. Check that one out. It'll go a little deeper on this subject. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today for Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name is Dusty. Bill and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.